So up until now, we've been talking a lot about messages, what they are, and how they're used, and how they represent an SOA uh, structure, and how that, of course, fits in with MQ, and then later we'll talk about ICFM. But we haven't actually looked at what a message is. What does it contain, that is? And messages essentially are contain three parts. So one, two, and three. The first part is what's called the header. And the header contains arbitrary, uh, non-arbitrary information, fixed information, uh, which are things like the unique message ID. So you can I identify this particular message because you could have thousands or hundreds of thousands of messages. You want to know which one it is. You'd see that in the header. You'd see routing information. You'd see reply information, message priorities. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a, in a few minutes. Th that's called the header. And secondly, you have something called the properties of the message. And the properties are arbitrary information and what that means as opposed to there here which is not arbitrary these are fixed so not arbitrary and arbitrary information is it's exactly that it, it, it's content that really is only meaningful to the two endpoints involved to the applications really involved so not to the message queue system it does it's really uh, mq doesn't need to know and really doesn't know anything about these arbitrary properties and you find here in the properties things like uh, strings, they're Boolean, different uh, integers could be listed here. They're essentially uh, anything that's not contained in this last piece, which is called the body, or also called data, the data portion. This is sometimes called the application, uh, the application data. It's also called the payload because it contains the most useful information for your applications. The message data part of a message is also arbitrary. So it contains, just like the properties uh, portion, any sequence of bytes. So it could be defined, it's essentially defined by the sending program. And it's understood by the receiving program. It's, com it's completely unmeaning. It has no meaning at all for the, for the queue manager. And it can contain uh, structured information. So you can have things like XML and you can have tagged information. So anything that has a structure uh, and it can also contain anything that's uh, completely unstructured too. So you have binary files, for example, you can have videos, you can have files of any kind. All that is listed in the body. So I might be wondering, okay, what's the difference then between the body and properties if they're both contain going to contain arbitrary information? Well, this is, this is more geared toward metadata the, the, this is essentially, in the header, the most metadata about the message itself. This is more metadata regarding the contents of the message. Uh, the Not the message, but the body of the message. So it's sort of like this metadata here, this section here, is sort of describing the whole message. Whereas this metadata is just sort of describing this area here. So the properties then what can will basically permit explicit statements of relationship between messages so you could say for example message x is a reply so x is a reply to y for example so those are the three uh, main components now what ha happens here is that when you're looking at the header there are several fields and actually that these all contain essentially fields right so all of these are going to have a series of fields involved. But the header one specifically contains really important uh, series of fields, again, because it's containing the metadata about the message. So one of the most important ones is called the message type. And the message type describes high level, the high level purpose of the message. The most frequently used values in this field are the datagram, request, reply, and report. A uh, datagram is set by the sending application when it's not expecting any response or any reply from the receiving application. There's another thing here. Let's uh, put this in a different color. There's another thing here called a message ID. And the message ID goes along with something called the correlation ID. The message ID, uh, based both of them actually, are used to identify a specific request or a reply message. So the programmer can set a value in one or both fields or have WebSphere MQ automatically create a unique ID. 
these fields are t about 25, they actually are 25 bytes long, and they're not treated as characters uh, and that, uh, that can be converted between code pages, between, for example, ASCII and EBC ID. Okay, uh, there's another flag here, another field, essentially. It's called persistence. Persistence is important because persistence, if, if it's set, it means that the, arb that the message can be persisted, that is saved, to a hard drive. And the hard drive of where? Well, it'll be the queue manager because uh, that has, is, is doing all the routing, of course. And that's opposed to, an, and, a, and the message like that would be called a persistent message, and an, as opposed to a non-persistent message, which essentially is held in RAM. So if your server uh, goes offline for some reason and the message is persistent, then when you reboot the computer, you'll still have it. But if it's not persistent, when you reboot the computer, it'll be gone. So that is an important distinction. And this is the information that that is held in the header about persistence. That flag tells you in the header whether the message is persistent or not. You also have something called a priority. And the priority is essentially exactly what it sounds like. It tells you, uh, it, and it's set, by the way, from a value of from 1 to 10. So an administrator can define that messages are retrieved in priority order rather than the first in and first out sequencing, which is more common. Uh, you also have something called a put time and put date, which essentially do what you would expect. They are, uh, when the message is put to a queue, these values are an UTC, universal time, coordinated time, coordinated universal time, um, or GMT, but definitely not the local time. Messages have an, also have an expiration time, so you're going to see that in here, expiry. After, the time, after that time has passed, the message cannot be returned to any application. This is used for situations where a message is not going to be useful after a while. So for example, after sending a request message, an application is often waits a finite period of time, say 10 seconds, for a reply. And then after that 10 seconds expires, then it may not be worthwhile to have the message anymore. And so you set this expiry um, uh, field so that you know uh, how long the message is essentially good for. Now, also in the event of a system failure, the messages are removed from the queues when they're no longer useful and, and don't waste uh, disk or memory space because you know you could potentially have thousands of messages that have expired. You don't want to keep those uh, you know, ara around on the hard drive. You also have something here called reply to queue. So you have reply to queue, and you also have reply to queue manager. And this is because the routing of messages and where they should go and who they should be uh, re replied to, who, who should um, receive the responses, those things are, routing information, are carried in the header. They're stored in the header. And they are names typically in the initial requests uh, going out. Separately, there's something called a format. We're still in the header, by the way. This whole thing is all header information. There's something called the format field, and that describes the message, uh, the message data. It's often set to, so it's going to look like this. It's often set to MQSTR to denote text, so the STR is first string, or it could be set to none, where none would would denote binary data, so binary and string data. But there are other possible values. So in some cases, the body of the message is itself made up of additional WebSphereMQ defined structures. And the format field tells WebSphereMQ what to do with that data. User-defined formats can also be used. So the format setting causes data conversion to take place when it's needed. So we talked a little bit about that before. So if you, if, if you it causes WebSphereMQ to convert text data between, so you have ASCII on the one hand, and you have EBC. DIC, which are, these are different code pages. This is pretty old here. This is more for older systems. Um, um, those can all be essentially uh, converted. The, and, and actually, there's a field for that, which is called coded car for character set for that. OK. We also have something about uh, something called put application type. 
and there's a separate one called put application name and the type is exactly that is the type of program that's being uh, sending this information is putting the program that the program is putting on the queue so it's information about the sending application and the path too so it's uh, it's the actual application's name and its path and the platform on which it's running there's also something called a report field which is used to request information about the message as it's processed so for example, if the queue manager can send a report message to the sending application when it puts the message in a target queue or when the receiving application gets it off of the queue. Then there's also uh, another field here called, make some more space, there's another field here called backout count. So a backout occurs when the message for some reason can't really be received. If, it's have, if, if the recipient has to back it out or if the queue can't get it sent, Key manager can't send it. It'll be backed out, and the number of times that that's happened is recorded in backout count. So the, an application can check that counter and make some sort of action on it. If, for example, it could send the message to a different queue where the reason for the backout is analyzed by some by an administrator. And then you also have messages that can be sent as part of a group. And when that happens, you're going to have two fields. One is called group ID and another one is called message sequence number and these messages the receiving application basically will wait until all the messages from the group have arrived before starting to process and the message grouping will guarantee that the order in which the messages were sent is, is preserved so you don't want these messages to arrive out of order and that's what these two fields will help you do especially the message sequence number of course and uh, those again all of these um, essentially all of these here are part of what we had said it's the MQ this is all called MQ messages scripter MD sorry MQ MD where MD stands for the message descriptor there we go now just really Briefly, if you're interested in more of this detail or if you need to look up more of this detail, this is a nice article here that goes through uh, basically what we did. And also it highlights the fact that there was a major change between the message formatting, yeah. the contents of these messages between version 6 and 7. And you can see the message format having uh, essentially changed here. And these additional headers we were talking about with that properties, you can sort of see, right, we've got headers, but then we have additional headers. And this document explains why that was. Most of it was so that the JMS system, the Java messaging system, which lets you in Java send out a bunch of messages and handle messages essentially, uh, was updated so that the JMS system and the message queuing system could handle, uh, could talk to each other a little bit better between um, the map their fields a little more smoothly. And uh, you can get some more information essentially about what we were talking about. Here's some additional illustrations, right? So we talked about the descriptor and those additional headers. And then of course the payload we've been talking about. And then here are the fields that we were talking about along with a quick description of those uh, of those things. Plus the message properties, if you're interested a little bit more about what's in that, right? You see this message descriptor, the other properties and other, um, the payload involved, like just like we were talking about essentially. And I'll let you go through the rest of this article. It's actually pretty good if, if you're interested interested in it but if you need um, a, this is essentially if you need this sort of data uh, this kind of detail then you would be you know coming to a page like this anyhow and the question is here you know what's the content of a message look like and you know <laughs> the more you look at it the more um, you'll see but the, really the most important thing is like we talked about the headers at the beginning of the message and here, here by the way is how the version 7 and version 6 message headers correspond so in version 6 down here you had this application data and you had the message descriptor and and that was pretty much it whereas in message 7 you know messaging version 7 uh, you get this additional header so uh, then again this explains why that was and then lastly on page 36 of the MQ primer you'll see the three header property and data sections of a data message so of a, of a message so you can see, I'll let you read through this but another thing to keep in mind is that the messages uh, messages cannot exceed 100 megabytes of data and there are no constraints on the format of that data 
And if you'd like to see what this actually looks like, you can load uh, the MQMD header and see something along these lines where you see the message string that we talked about, the put, date, and time, the message ID, correlation ID, group ID, these application origins, its path, the name, these things that we just talked about, you can sort of see them nicely broken down. And if you'd like more details, you can see this website, this URL on developer works.